So, let's say your knife is dull by eye. That is, when you do this, there's little glints of light in places where the edge has been folded over or nicked up or something like that. Not this one, because I just spent these two videos right here consecutively uh, sharpening this thing. So, uh, it, just pretend along with me that this is a dull knife. Occasionally, though, it won't actually be dull. It will just be folded over on the edge. That means that it doesn't necessarily need sharpening. It just needs honing. Now, what is honing? If you're not talking about straight razors because they misuse the term, um, you're talking about using something like this. The thing that you see in every kitchen block and don't really know what it does. A lot of people think this is a sharpening rod. That is not the case, although they do make sharpening rods. This one in particular happens not to be. A sharpening rod will have some kind of abrasive in it or just be made of really hard steel. They all, in my experience at least, have this kind of uh, banding cut in it, very fine, going down, just to help um, with the honing process. Now, a lot of people will take a towel or something like that and set that down and match the exact angle going down on both sides. That's a very precise way of doing it, although that's not strictly necessary if you're particularly good at what you're doing. As I say, often gear like this can take the place of all kinds of things, and one of those things is technique. With the proper technique, you can use the back of any knife, including a butter knife, like this one. So, just to be show-offy, that's what we're going to do. So, we have our pretend dull knife in need of honing, and we have our butter knife or the back of any other knife that you happen to have access to that we're going to be using for our honing. Hold it at the angle that matches the grind angle on the side that you're using. Apply extremely light pressure. The weight of the knife ought to be enough, and in some cases the weight of the knife may actually be too much going up. Now, if you're wanting to be extra careful, you can switch sides. And if you're not super confident, in your ability to switch sides, you can hold that relatively still and control the right side, because all you really have to do is make sure that it's going at the right angle there. That may require a little more coordination than what you're used to doing with your left hand. So if you want to spend an, an additional couple minutes and learn a really cool trick, you can pretty easily figure out how to go down that way, and then adjust. Be careful when you're doing this, but come up so that the reverse stroke is at the same, or the, the correct, whatever is the correct angle for that. Occasionally, uh, grinds are offset one way or the other. So pay attention to the grind on your knife, or the grind that you just put on your knife <laughs> will, being fresh in your memory, adjust it to that. That is much too steep, for example. It's very easy to screw it up if you haven't done it in a long time, or you are looking through the viewfinder of a camera instead of actually at what you're doing. There we go. Now, that's, that's just a couple of strokes. When you're getting towards the edge to get it really laser precise, you're going to want to do just a a feather weight, not even a third of the weight of the actual knife, just the lightest possible touch. And that ought to be, yeah, that's perfect. Oh, oh, that is fantastic. You can't really feel it because you're on the other side of a camera, but, uh, but I can, and I can tell you that this is excellent. Alright, mission accomplished. We successfully used a butter knife.
and to achieve the same edge that you would get out of a professional tool. Technique, more important than basically everything else. <laughs> I mean, by all means, use proper tools, but with the proper technique, proper tools are not always necessary. If you enjoyed this video and got something out of it, uh, share it around to other people who might enjoy it or get something out of it. Give me a like to raise my ranking in search results and get me to show up on that nifty sidebar that gives me, excuse me, even more exposure. Give me a subscription so that you can see more potentially useful and interesting videos in the future, and maybe even visit my shop on Etsy where you can find interesting quick release paracord items like, oh, hang on, it's, yeah, it's on my ankle, there, <sighs> like this guy. This is the quick release spine coil. What differentiates a quick release from a rapid deployment, which you will also see there, is your need to undo it one step before you just, oh, look at that. The whole thing will come apart if I keep doing that. All right, I'm gonna put this back together and shoot, and then shoot some more videos. Bye.